Oh, hey, I'm Coco, and welcome to our talk show, Single and Too Tired to Mingle. We'll be talking about relationships with ourselves, our exes, our kids, and other important beings. So stay tuned. All right, hi everyone. We have such an amazing and interesting speaker here today, Dr. G. Hey. <laughs> he is an author, speaker, ordained minister, producer, and so much more, as we'll see. So welcome. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Coco. <laughs> <laughs> <You're welcome>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're originally from Phoenix, Arizona. Yes, yes. And you I now am. live in London. Yes, I do. So welcome to London. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How are you finding it so far? Uh, it's good. You know, I mean, don't want to complain too much about the weather. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not yeah. quite a Londoner yet. Yeah, you <laughs> not, need to complain about the yet. weather to be a proper Londoner. <laughs> not quite yet. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's been good. Okay. Yeah, Amazing. Yeah. Are you staying long? Am I staying on? Yeah. Yes, it appears so. Okay, very good. <laughs> <laughs> it appears so. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this show, Tuesday Talks, as you know, is about relationships. So um, we're going to start off with that. Yeah. And uh, much as I've managed to avoid being um, married... You have been married several times. <laughs> <laughs> Branded through a bit of series of unfortunate events. That's right. That's right. Uh, which we'll talk about today. Um, and we're going to start, actually, we're going to focus on your first marriage. Yes. Uh, through which you wrote a book as well, which is called The Journey Interrupted. That's right. So why don't you uh, kind of walk us through that a little bit. Tell us um, how you met your first wife and a little bit about her. And tell us why the journey was interrupted. Yeah, you know, uh, thank you uh, for that introduction. Awesome introduction. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's get down to that let's first question. Yeah. All right. Now, um, my first wife's name is Pam, and I, I do want to refer to her as Pam because yeah. uh, she was such an important person uh, in my life. Yeah. Uh, I described the meeting with Pam as uh, quite destined. Right. It was a destined meeting. And I'll tell you why I call it a destined meeting. Mm -hmm. I used to work for a major financial services company. Right. And at the time, uh, I was in Tyson's Corner, Virginia. For people that are familiar with the United States, they will know that that's in the uh, close to the D.C. metro area. So I used to work there. And then I um, the company decided that they needed to branch out right. to several uh, states, several places in the United States. Okay. And I was told initially that I was going to be going to San Francisco. Right. And at the time, I had never been to the West Coast. Okay. Yeah, I'd been on the East Coast for several years, loved it. And But I'd heard so many things about the West Coast. So I was excited that, yeah, I get to go to San Francisco. That's so nice. But lo and behold, at the very last minute, when I say very last minute, I'm saying a day before right. I was about to travel. I got a phone call that morning and said, hey, uh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Martins. We have decided to switch your flight to Phoenix, Arizona. And the <laughs> <laughs> and not the what you want to hear, right? <laughs> no, not at all. I had nightmares. <laughs> I had I'd heard horror tales about right. uh, Phoenix, about Arizona, and I said, oh, no. And the person that was supposed to go to Phoenix mm. has now been transferred to go to San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky guy. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I found myself. Okay. It was March. Uh, I remember the month right. uh, specifically because it had been snowing in the Virginia area the very morning that I left wow. to go to Phoenix. Okay. And so I landed in Phoenix with my coat, you know, not even thinking to check the weather. Yeah, How was yeah, the weather yeah. going to be like in Phoenix? It was awesome. Mm. It was 70 degrees, uh, nice, bright, yeah. sunny. And so my first impression was like, yes, okay. okay. <laughs> now the next, the next one had to do with expanding uh, their office there in Phoenix. There was already a manager, the, a, a manager that was already in the office, and I was supposed to assist him. Right. And so very quickly, I think, I got there on a Friday. On Monday, work began right away. And 
midweek, we started hiring people because the goal was to hire about 30 representatives and get the office going. And then after that job was done, I would be transferred to another city. So here I was in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, again, as I said, my first impression was good with the weather. The people that came to pick me up at the airport were really nice people. In fact, I stayed with them uh, during all my time in Phoenix. And so on Monday, we got to the office and, you know, a couple of days later, it was time to start interviewing people that uh, that wanted the position. One of the people that came in was a young lady called Pam. Okay, here we go. (laughs) (laughs) Little did she know. (laughs) Little did she know. I got to tell you, uh, there was something about her when the first meeting. And now I know some people may say, well, people don't fall in love at first sight and all that stuff. For me, it was just the look in her eyes. I knew, and this was strange. It was a feeling of... uh, just being comfortable, mm. a feeling of almost deja vu, oh, in fact, as yeah. if we've known each other before. Mm. I just felt a sense of comfort as if I've known you before. Wow. Yeah, I didn't tell her that because yeah. I didn't want to freak yeah. out. <laughs> that would have been quite a weird thing to say the first interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want to freak out. So, okay. But but the, the feeling that I had was, gosh, I, I feel yeah, like I've, I've, yeah. I've known you before. Okay. One thing led to another. Yes, she was hired. Yes, you can <laughs> <Yeah>. imagine. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> she had a good CV though, right? She had a good CV. <laughs> yeah, 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 she did. She did. She actually did. <laughs> And so we started to work together. Uh, I was assigned as the person that would train her Mm -hmm. and the person that would kind of help her through the process of becoming uh, a full-scale financial advisor. And so, man, what a... (laughs) How quickly she became that. (laughs) (laughs) And obviously, as time went on, we became friends. Yeah. And it turned from a professional Mm -hmm. to friendly and personal uh, because Pam lived in Arizona, she'd been there for a few years. Um, she knew all the places to go. And so Pam and I would just go to the different sites in, 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 in Phoenix. And yeah. uh, it was wonderful. It was, and the relationship grew and grew and grew. And we became, um, the, the bond became stronger. And I began to, <laughs> you're smiling, I began, I began to understand the feeling of, wow, I feel like I've known you before. Mm. I feel like I've known you before. And because as time went on, those those feelings actually became reality. Mm. As I got to know her, I, I began to see um, the kind of person that yeah. she was, just a very unique and special person. Hey, as things were getting really stronger between Pam and I, I got another phone call. Hey, it's now time. For, <laughs> <laughs> you've done a good job in Phoenix. Thank you. Uh, we have met our goal of the number of representatives right. that we want. The office is doing well. It's now time for you to go. <laughs> but were you going out with Pam already? Or I was already you? going out okay. with Pam. I just have a question. Yeah. Is it legal or frowned upon to be dating someone who's actually below you? In, well, in the same company? In, in the same company, well, yeah, but the, the, the rule was not so, um, at the time, it wasn't like you cannot date. Right, okay. Um, and, you know. Uh, it's in place in some places. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a, a hard rule right, okay. uh, that you cannot date. In fact, uh, one other manager and another one had gotten together and dated and got married. Right. Uh, yeah, top uh, right, manager. Okay. So, yeah, it, it would have been it would have been tough for them to say, yeah, well, you yeah, cannot yeah, date. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was good. And, you know, I got the phone call. Well, it's now time to go to Chicago. Okay. Oh boy. I didn't want to go. Right. I'm like, I want to stay in Phoenix. Can I? Was the wind too much? (laughs) (laughs) I was having too much fun. It was so good. But lo and behold, it was time to leave Pam behind. Oh no. And go to Chicago for some time. For some time. Okay. So you actually left to go to Chicago. I actually left. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And went to Chicago. However, Pam did accompany me on the long drive, two to three days drive, by the way, from Phoenix to Chicago. And she couldn't move with you? 
She couldn't. Um, Pam uh, was from Iowa. Uh, if you're familiar with the United States, that's in the uh, middle. Okay. It's right in the middle, uh, Midwest of the uh, of the United States. Uh, she had grown up, gone to college in Iowa. She actually fled Iowa right. because she wanted to be somewhere sunnier, uh, more cosmopolitan. Okay. And so Chicago was too close to Iowa. Right. Chicago is okay. also okay. yeah. Chicago is also in the Midwest, and so I could not convince Pam to move <laughs> <laughs> with me to Chicago. But we had a plan. We had a plan. What was that plan? Well, the plan was that sooner or later, I would either return mm -hmm. to Phoenix or somehow I may be able to twist her hand right. to move to Chicago. That was the plan. Right. And so, so what happened in the end? Yeah, so we just Who kinda, went where? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, the plan was, the way it worked out was I eventually left Chicago. Okay. And this was maybe almost a year later. And so we did... Um, like uh, long uh, back and forth, long distance relationship, okay. which which I found can be good. Okay. Uh, can be, can be, you know. Uh, so how long absence, was the long? Yeah, yeah. Absence makes the heart as long as it's grow not fonder. Too absent. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, that's that's why I say fine line. I, yeah, yeah. It is. That's why I say actually. I I I, I like to say absence can make the heart yeah grow fonder. Yeah, it can. But as you know, there's another side. Too much absence, as you say. Yeah. Can, the can, heart wanders. <laughs> can lead to shenanigans. So yeah, that's not exactly. good. <laughs> exactly. The heart wanders. Oh, yeah. So at some point, yeah. you wanted to marry her. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I, I knew. Again, as I said, when I met Pam for yeah. the first time, I knew. I said, this is, that's, it's, this, this is it. I mean, it's her. No question whatsoever. Amazing. And in her mind, as we as we uh, grew to know each other, there was no question in oh, Pam's Pam's sweet. mind as well. Yeah, okay. it was. Oh, of course, it's like oh yeah, no question. So what happened? So, <laughs> were there any <laughs> obstacles in this? Uh... <laughs> in this, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, in this <laughs> adventure. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, uh, 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 we were uh, an. Uh, interracial uh, uh, couple. Okay. Uh, Pam was uh, a German background. Mm, okay. um, uh, and uh, of course, when she told her dad, uh, who had been uh, uh, first generation. I was going to say, so, yeah, okay, first fine. Generation, yeah, yeah. yeah. She told her dad, um, well, I met a great guy. Oh, of course, dad was excited. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> a catch. By, by the way, Dad, uh, he's black. What? Now I don't know. There's a there's a um, there's an actor. Uh, his name is uh, so it's a black American actor. His mm -hmm. name is uh, Sidney Poitier. Yeah. Uh, and there was a movie uh, that he played this role in called uh, Guess Who's Coming That's Home. That's such an amazing movie. Yeah, actually. you saw it. Yeah, I've Guess seen Who's it. Coming Home it's to so Dinner. It's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Pam's dad said this man ain't coming. Home. <laughs> <laughs> this man ain't coming on to oh, dinner. No. There was actually a law until 1962, which is quite recently, if we look at it, right? Yeah, that yeah. interracial couples were actually not allowed to get married in Arizona. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Like, I mean, yeah. Not that really, long ago. Yeah, yeah, not right? that long ago. It's really crazy. I mean, that those kind of laws uh, made it into it's the book. Actual, yeah. It's and an actual, actual law. law. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what is crazy is this. Pam and I met in the 90s, right? Right. Um, even though, yes, the law was uh, eradicated mm. already by the time Pam and I met, uh, the hearts of people mm. still, some, yeah. still remain the same. So the law did not change the heart. Yeah, that's it. It takes a while. Yeah, it takes a while. to catch up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so it took a while for Pam's mm. dad and perhaps a couple of others to catch up. Most of the people that we interacted with, friends and and all that, they were great. Yeah. Even Pam's mom was great. Oh, okay. Many of her sisters, no problem. Right. Uh, now, I'm not saying that everybody had no, I mean... Some people may have had problems where they, you yeah, know, was yeah. kind of secret. Sure. But as far as uh, our true friends, I mean, they were all. I mean, they saw they 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 saw the obvious love oh. and bond 
that we shared. It was, yeah, it was, it was that good. Okay, so you didn't get her father's approval, yet you still married her. Yeah, I Is did. That, yeah? I did because uh, um, her father had actually said to her that a. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, Pam was actually one of a. Uh, dad's favorite daughters, right. yeah, seven daughters, right. yeah, and Pam was one of the favorite daughters, <laughs> and Pam was kind of like her father, yeah. stubborn in her own right. way, okay. and so when Dad said, "Hey, uh, don't bring that fella home," uh, and or otherwise, uh, you won't get any of my inheritance, right. And Pam said, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Good for Pam. Good for Pam. <laughs> you know, that's fine. Yeah, I've made yeah, the yeah, choice. Yeah. I've okay. made the choice, Dad. I've okay. made the choice. Yeah. So what made the dad so resistant? A good question. Yeah. Situation. Later on, here's what I found out. I found out that many years ago when um, his name is Bill, mm -hmm. when he was in World War II as a soldier, mm -hmm. um, he had fallen and um, he says a black soldier walked past right. without helping him. Okay. And uh, that really um, hurt him. Right. And unfortunately for him, uh, he extended the pain that was caused by one man mm. to millions of black people, including me. <laughs> it just including shows me. you, right, how yeah. important just basic human interaction is. Yeah. And what lasting negativity, I guess, it can harbor, right? And uh, the absolutely. other way around, I'm sure, right? Oh, if yeah, it helped yeah, yeah. him, maybe the situation would have been different. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Right. Maybe, yeah. But that's that's what he said. And that's where the um, bias uh, right. developed, originated. And perhaps there were other things down the line, I don't mm. know. But that's where it originated, according to him. Okay, yeah. so you guys were married for... A long time. Yeah, yes, we were. Before he came around. So you never interacted with him that I whole never, time? I never so how, did. How many years was that that yeah, you didn't interact it was, with him? It was almost, um, almost, I would say, almost nine or ten years that I never interacted wow. with him. Wow. Because what happened was this. We had a first child, hmm. and uh, he had no problems. He loved my first son. Wow. Yeah. Pam would go to Iowa, of course, without me. Yeah. And, you know, I would be a bit sad. I was going to say, how hurtful yeah, is that for you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I felt a bit sad that hmm. I, I um, would have to stay behind. But I told Pam that I, I didn't want any friction, yeah. any more friction with her dad and and. You know, she could go ahead and, and take uh, take take the boys. We had another son right. after the first one, so two boys, and they both went uh, to Iowa. Uh, they lived on a four hundred acre farm, wow. so it was like paradise. Yeah, you know, yeah. horses and farmland that went on and on and on. Wow. So uh, and a river running through it. No way. Oh, it was beautiful. beautiful. It was beautiful, beautiful. So. Uh, my boys enjoyed going to uh, Iowa. Yeah, with I can imagine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they they did. Mm -hmm. But again, I stayed behind for ten uh, years. For ten years. For about and then ten what happened? years. And then, ha, something happened. And the something that happened was this: mm. Pam's nephew was getting married, not in Iowa, but mm. in Montana. Right. Montana is northwest. Is that significant that it wasn't in Iowa? Um, actually, no. It was just okay. because uh, they lived in Montana. Right. Yeah, he lived in Montana. Um, so the marriage was was mm -hmm. uh, set up in Montana. Montana is northwest of the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were all invited. I, this nephew, I knew him very well. He'd been to Arizona. So he, I, I liked him. It was great. I was happy for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Pam said, yeah, you know, my nephew's getting married and we're going to go to Helena, Montana. I said, great. Oh, my dad's going to be there as well. <laughs> I said, oh, I said, wow, I'm not, I'm not sure I really want to go. And she goes, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is not Iowa. This is Montana. This is not his turf. Yeah, that's he, what I was wondering, if it's yeah, significant. So yeah. he wasn't at home. Yeah, he wasn't yeah. at home. This yeah. is not his turf. Yeah, you And I've been to Montana before yeah. anyway. So so she twisted my arm and okay. said, hey, listen, Neil, just you, you need to see my dad. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, you need to see my dad. I said, okay, all right, no problem, no problem. So we drove to Montana. Okay. And I can remember, you know, as we were driving to the house uh, where I knew I was going to meet him. 
And I was like, oh, boy, man. Sweating a little bit? Yeah. What's this going to be like? What's this going to be like? You know. Anyway, so it was the first time of meeting Bill was uneventful. Right. Um, I was actually surprised to see uh, when I saw him that he was still a very handsome guy. He was in his 80s, exactly. early 80s. I mean, uh, he had the bluest eyes. Yeah. And he was just... I mean, for his age, when he shook my hand, I felt like it was a 30-year-old shaking my hand. Okay. Strong, firm grip. Okay. But again, this guy was a farmer, so right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was strong. Yeah. He was strong. And I was impressed. Um, and uh, I greeted him respectfully, sir. You know, uh, nice to meet you, sir, I said. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he shook my hand. I said, nice to meet you. And... We sat down. There were other people in the room. Uh, okay. Didn't really have much of an interaction right. with him on that first day. However, it was now the second day, time to go to the wedding. The wedding was held outside, you know, outside. It was uh, it was nice, but they had been uh, due on the grass. Mm -hmm. And we uh, had sat the whole wedding party from from the groom side uh, sat at a particular place. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, they wanted to move us to another place. Right. Uh, I happened to be sitting next to my father-in-law. Mm -hmm. And as he was getting up, because of the grass that was wet, he was about to slip and fall. And so I grabbed him very quickly and stopped him from falling. Wow. And he looked in my eyes and he nodded. Didn't say thank you. <laughs> you made me cry. Yeah. He didn't say thank you. He didn't say whatever. Wow. He just he just looked in my eyes and went like this. He nodded. How history repeats itself. Yeah, right? yeah. he just nodded. Wow. Yeah. And so guess what? Yeah, the wedding was great. We drove back home to Arizona. Next thing, next day, uh, my mother-in-law calls Pam and says, what did G tell? What did he say? What did he say to uh, to Bill? He, they, they hardly said a word. Yeah. <laughs> and she asked me, did you say anything? No, I, I hardly spoke to him. Yeah. And uh, he has totally changed his mind wow. about him, you know. And you know what it was about? He said that I could have allowed him to fall right, okay. because he 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 knew that I'd I'd heard some of the things that he had said about me. Right. Okay. And so yeah. <laughs> so he, so he said, was conscious of that. Right? Oh yeah, he was yeah, he was yeah. he was <laughs> conscious of that. Uh, and he said, "Well, I could have let him fall, but I didn't." Oh, sweet. And that's okay. when the change began. Okay. That's when the change began. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and our relationship took a different turn wow. after that one incident, that one incident. Quite amazing, huh? Yeah, yeah. And good for him. Yeah, good for him. Good yeah. for him, good for yeah. him. Because again, as I said, he was maybe 84 years old at the yeah. time that I met him. Yeah, okay. yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah, yeah, good for him, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of like a happy ending there. Well, yeah, yeah. But now we have Other another ending <laughs> that... Took another turn. It took so another. tell us what happened with Pam after that. Yeah. So again, uh, some time went by, and then Pam began experiencing headaches. Right. Uh, these headaches came out of nowhere. I felt um, initially we thought it was just uh, you know just regular headaches. Mm -hmm. Take uh, paracetamol. Or we we had Tylenol back mm -hmm. in the states. Yeah. Take Tylenol headache medicine, and you're okay. Well. First day, second day, nah, the pills didn't work, right. and so we went to the uh, to her uh, doctor, and um, so he said, "Well, you know, uh, ladies usually have uh, migraines, and it could be that this is migraine, so uh, we'll prescribe a, a strong right. uh, medication." Well, she took that medication, but guess what? Things got even worse. There was a day that she was in such severe pain that I had to rush her to the ER. And again, she was admitted for a day. Guess what? After checking her out, the, another doctor said, well, I think it's just severe headaches because headaches, this migraines can last for weeks. And so they prescribe another medication. 
Well, guess what? Of course, it wasn't migraines because the headaches did not stop. They continued, which led us to go to yet another doctor. It was the, doc the third doctor that said, has anyone thought about her having an MRI? Yeah. And yeah, which he thought that, that, that <laughs> I mean, yeah, logical, yeah. right? We said, no, no one. Yeah. And so he said, uh, we need to get an MRI done right now. Okay. They got the MRI done. Um, he, he gave me a call and said, you need to rush her to, um, this was Barrow's Neurological Institute because there's something that is unusual mm. that the MRI picked up. Wow. And so here I am with Pam, we don't know what's going on, but I'm rushing her to this Neurological Institute. Uh, and we get there, she gets admitted, they take a closer look, and after a few hours, the surgeon came out and said, wow, Mr. Martins, I am so sorry. I said, what? She goes, what she has is one of the most um, deadly forms of brain cancer. Wow. Uh, there's a tumor on the right side of her brain the size of a golf ball. Wow. And I'm so sorry. Um, the diagnosis, the prognosis is maybe three months. Wow. And so we went from oh, it's just a headache, might be a migraine, to something that was so deadly. And how old was she at the time? Uh, she was 37, 8, something like that. And how old were the kids? Yeah, the, uh, the kids were very young at the time. Uh, our first son was 5. Wow. And uh, our other son was 3. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it, it was, it was uh, devastating. Um, Pam and I looked at each other and we thought, wow, is this some kind of horrible yeah, nightmare? What is this? Uh, but it was true. And, and they had to operate and take as much of the tumor yeah. out as they could, knowing very well that it was a fast growing right. tumor and it would come back. And so it was with all this. Uh, her parents were told, sisters were told, and her dad, for the first time, came to Arizona. Okay. Yeah, under those circumstances. However, if what hadn't happened in Montana where yeah. we were able to, um, he was able to let go mm. of the buyers, if that hadn't happened, it would have been difficult for him to have come to Arizona to see us in our home wow. yeah but the door had been opened and so uh, he was able to at least um, see Pam uh, and and uh, it'll be a comfort uh, to her so she was at home not in the hospital uh, she had been she had been discharged from the hospital right. uh, they had done the first surgery um, she was okay for some time after the first surgery, uh, because they had taken 99% of the tumor right. that was causing all the problems, they had taken it away again, but 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 uh, the cancer, again, was one that was just a fast oh, growing. Yeah. They knew that it was yeah. only a matter of time before the cancer came back. And so, but there was a period of time uh, that uh, you know, we were, she was fine. Uh, when I say she was fine, I mean we, we were able to travel. She, I mean, uh, she was she was able to work. Wow. Uh, we worked together. We had a business oh, together. Okay. Yeah, so we worked together, and she was able to work. Uh, she was able to take care of the kids. Um, we were able to talk honestly. Did you tell the kids? Um, it was the difficult. Tiny, so, yeah, you know. it was difficult. It was difficult to tell them um, uh, what was going on. Yeah. We did. I did tell them later, right. but in the beginning, it was it was difficult. Yeah, it was it. difficult to cross that Ooh. bridge. Very difficult. Yeah. How did you handle that? Oh, it was tough. It was tough. Um, you know, uh, a, a couple of ways. I'm um, I'm a man of faith, so I went back to my faith, which is God is in control, which is 
prayer, which is meditation. Um, because through meditation, the soul gets strengthened. Mm -hmm. And this is where I personally had to gain my strength through time of solitude and meditation and prayer. And uh, uh, in fact, there were times that I would get up early in the morning at like 5 a.m., uh, get on my motorcycle and ride up to the mountaintop. I'll ride up to a mountain right. and uh, a, so, uh, uh, a place of solitude. I wouldn't see anybody, just me. So I'll park my bike and walk up uh, to the mountaintop and scream as loud as I could. Just scream out and let it all out. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things that I did. Um, just It was just a release. Ah! Uh, I did that. I would do that several times. I had uh, affirmations that I would uh, 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 speak over, right. over and over again to encourage myself, you know, to stay, stay strong because I needed to stay strong. Why? Because Pam also, I was a strength for her. I was going to uh, say, did you well. allow her to see kind of your weaknesses or that you were feeling? the sadness and the stress of what she was going through. Were you able to show her that or? Yeah, there was a time. There was a time mm -hmm. and one time where I broke down in front of her. Right. A lot of times, you know, I would get up very early again, go to my quiet place, right. you know, do my prayers, do my meditation, do my affirmations, yeah. Yeah, ride up on the mountain and scream and yell. Yeah. I would do all those things. But there was a time there was a time, and Pam saw me, and Pam, I mean, uh, you know, we marriage the two or one. Uh, when one person is weak, the other should not be weak yeah. as well. The other person should be a strength That's for the weak person. And so I tried as much as possible to be that strength right. for her. And she saw that, that, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And I could see that that was helping. Yeah. Uh, but there was a particular day we were having a conversation. And she said something to me that I just couldn't hold back my tears. Right. She says, you know, uh, I, I just want to thank you for supporting me. And I, I, I pray for you that when I'm gone, you'll find someone that loves you as much as I do. Wow. I, I couldn't hold back. And I just started. It. I just, I lost it. I lost it. I lost it. And uh, and then I, I saw in her face that oh wow, has he has he um are you are you okay um have, have you do you do you still have hope I said of course oh wow okay. always right always I said always always I said always so that was the only time. That okay. I cried in front of her. And Other she, times, and she took that as actually you not believing. That yeah, she would get better. Right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah, but uh, after that, uh, I kept yeah. my tears. <laughs> wow. I kept my tears in the room outside on the mountain. Yeah. yeah, even with some friends. Was it at that time that you formed a men's group? Yeah. So what happened, and the the way, well, the way the the the, the formal men's group. Uh, was formed uh, after Pam passed away. Right. However, what uh, while she was still alive, one of the things that I would do as a as a uh, the bike that I rode was a Harley Davidson. Right. And so basically, uh, how here's 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 how this kind of informal group started. Mm -hmm. I was at the Harley Davidson shop in Scottsdale, Arizona, just kind of gazing around and looking around at some. Uh, tricked out bikes, right? So I was admiring this tricked out bike and a fella came next to me and he started looking at the bike as well. And he says, wow, isn't she beautiful? I said, <laughs> well, I said oh, man, wow, she's a beauty, man. <laughs> and so we, we we started talking. Male bonding. I know, male bonding. Yeah, I said, man, she's a beauty. <laughs> you would think we were talking about some beautiful yeah, woman, it, right? but we were talking about a tricked out bike. And so I said, man, she's a beauty, man. Mm. And uh, she goes, hey, what do you? He goes, hey, what do you ride? So I told him uh, a street glide. He goes, oh, yeah, I ride, uh, you know, a heritage classic. This are all kinds of uh, Harley Davidson. And yeah. bikes, and so anyway, so we began. We began to talk somehow. Somehow, in that same conversation, um, I told him about. I said, "Yeah, you know, uh, 
I'm really having a, a hard time right now. Uh, my wife is sick. She's got terminal cancer. And I mean, this was a guy I just met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And he said, oh, man. Wow, you know, I got to tell you, just six months ago, I lost my daughter wow. to liver cancer. She was only 34. Oh I'm like, oh, man. His name was Bob. I'm like, oh, Bob, I'm so sorry. He goes, you know what? Um, why don't we exchange numbers? There are two other guys that I ride with. Right. If you want, we can all ride together. Okay. That's where that relationship right. of male bonded. Okay. And so, yes, I took up the invitation. Mm. And so I met Bob and Bob's brother uh, and uh, another friend. Right. And so we would just ride together every now and then. During the riding, there will be conversations, open conversations right. of... Yeah, you know, I'm dealing with this. Hey, brother, you know, um, I understand. And so there was a, there was a bonding that happened with between all this, all these writers. Okay. Other people joined us as well as they saw the bonding, and it was it was really good uh, because, I mean, everyone was dealing with different issues, yeah. and we were just able to uh, share these things in in that setting. Uh, so perhaps it was that that kind of motivated me afterwards yeah. to set up a men's group um, because men need to have time to share things with one another. There are some things that are particular to men mm -hmm. that some may not even feel comfortable sharing uh, these things with their wives, right. but they can share with another brother. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And so I found that out, you know, with this with a men's group that. Uh, Wow, you know, there's so many intimate things that, I mean, some people say men don't cry. That's a lie. I was going to say, uh, do men cry? Yeah, men do cry. Yeah, I've had guys bigger than me leaning on my shoulder in tears. Wow. Men do cry. Yeah, men do cry. Men have feelings. Men have a lot to say. Again, uh, you know, the perception of the strong, silent male mm. um, is overblown. Yeah. I've is, seen, he, is he just holding things back? It's just that's holding, why. It's just, <laughs> it's just holding, he's just holding things oh, back. No. He's just holding okay. things back. A lot of times when men get into what I call a sanctuary, a safe haven, yeah. where they feel like, yeah, my brother can understand he's not going to judge me. Mm -hmm. He's not going to criticize me. You know, he's not going to take it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Those kind of things are important to me. And I found out in the men's group. Right. That, you know, it's got to be a place where people can be open and honest and transparent and say, hey, listen, uh, yeah, I, I'm going through this. I'm going through that. And, you know, um, hey, fellas, is there is there anyone else that may be going through this or yeah. or uh, words of advice from from other even even if there are no words of advice, just the uh, fact yeah. that there is a safe place where you feel that you can share things yeah. and not be criticized, not be judged. Um, uh, that's so important. Mm. So important. I think, and this is something I touch upon in my book as well. I think everyone has similar issues. Yeah. There's no, you know, it's very hard to find a person that has an issue alone, yeah. just him or her, no one else. Yeah. So that's why these kind of tribes, I think, are so important. Yeah. Yeah. Where you do find your kind of soulmates and you Ab can open up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It kind of seems listening to you that a lot of things happen to you kind of spontaneously <laughs> and naturally. <laughs> um, and I think that kind of nowadays where, or maybe as we get older, I don't know, life is faster, you know, the tempo is quicker, especially in big cities. Yeah. Have we lost the ability to listen to our inner voice um, or are we still in tune and in touch with ourselves? What do you think? Uh, I think a lot of us have lost the ability to listen to that inner voice. Right. Now, of course, we are in a different kind of world today from the caveman. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about instinct. Basically, instinct, right? yeah. yeah. We're talking about yeah. instinct. We're talking about intuition. Yeah. We're talking about what I say is a God-given gift to everyone. Yeah. Everybody has, has that. Everyone. Mm -hmm. Now, in some, it may have been dulled and dusty. Right. <laughs> However, it's still there to uh, to a certain measure. Yeah. Uh, what dulls the inner voice is other voices. We rely so much on, these days, we rely so much 
on Google technology. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a story. We were in LA at one time. Um, there was a road work where we were going. We were actually going back to our hotel. Um, my wife said to me, turn right. The GPS said, turn left. Oh, interesting. She said, no, <laughs> turn right. Guess who I listened to? I listened to her and mm -hmm. she was right. Because somehow the GPS, perhaps it was archaic at the time, mm. maybe not the types that we have today yeah. in 2023, 2024. But the GPS said, turn right. She goes, no, turn, turn left. She says, no, turn right. I know. Right. And I listened to her. Why? Because over time also, I had learned to trust her instincts right. as well. Okay. And so, well, yeah, they're, they're, it, it, I mean... Um, we are in a world, again, that we're, we rely a lot on the internet, on technology, on all this. Now, these devices are great. However, however, uh, they should not dull. We should not allow the devices to dull the inner voice and the way that you can kind of uh, allow the inner voice to speak is by following because the more you follow, the more you hear, mm. and the more is that that is affirmed. The less you follow, the less you hear, because you're gonna hear a voice for sure. I was gonna say, how do you wake this up if you're not used to listening to yourself? The way to wake it up, I feel, is by taking a chance, mm. or what I call take a step of faith, brother. <laughs> 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 That's yeah. In my language, I say, take a step of faith, brother. <laughs> okay. Oh, but I may fall. So what? Exactly. Yeah. Babies fall before they learn how to exactly. walk. They don't say, oh, I fall. Oh, oh that's it. That's I'm it. Yeah, I'm yeah, done. yeah. I'm done. Yeah. But we've lost that. We've, I think we've, we've, we've lost that. So my words are, take a step of faith, brother. Yeah. And, and, and basically what that means is, uh, yeah, you may fall. Mm. However, you will never really learn to go back to uh, fine-tuning yeah. this inner voice and learning to discern, is this, is this my inner voice speaking or is this some other voice? Mm. Because we are surra surrounded by voices. True. We're surrounded by voices. Even internally, yeah. we have different voices that are speaking True. internally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not to talk of the voices, the many voices everywhere, that are yeah. everywhere, everywhere. How do you discern which one is that inner voice, the true compass? Yeah. You know, how do you discern? Well, learning, which means risk, which means yes, falling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that topic, actually. I think I love the topic of failure. Yeah. Um, for me, and I teach my kids this as well, there's no such thing as failure. If something hasn't gone well, okay, so what? You either do it again or you just realize maybe that's not for you and you do something different. Absolutely. So I've always told them I prefer that you do many different things and that's how you learn what you love to do. Yeah. Um, but I also find that a lot of people that I also know is they don't try anything new and they don't push themselves because what if they fail? What do you think about that? Yeah, What's you your stance on failure? I, I'm kind of like you on failure. Um, yeah. Is there such it, a thing? To me, there's no, there's not such a thing as failure as long as you get up again. I agree. As long yeah. as you get up That's again. That's it, yeah. You know, uh, there's a proverb by the wisest man, King Solomon. It says, uh, uh, the righteous man may fall seven times but he rises up again. Mm. Now, if you don't like Solomon and say, well, you know, I don't follow Solomon. <laughs> but do you do we follow have someone else? Yeah, there's someone else. <laughs> you follow this rock group. Yeah. I think they call yeah. uh, Top Thumping. I think it's the name of the rock <laughs> okay. group. It says uh, 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 they, they have a, a, a great song about um, uh, falling down. Mm. And basically, uh, I think the song goes like... Um, I, I I fall down, but I rise up again. That's it's it. basically yeah. using the same words yeah. of Solomon, you know, that I get knocked down. That's like, yeah, oh, I right. get knocked yeah. down. Oh, yeah. But I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know that song? Yeah. I, do. I get yeah, knocked yeah. down, but I get up again. That's yeah. It. I get knocked down. That's we it. all, life um, for us every now and then yeah. knocks us down. But guess what? The point is not being knocked down. We all get knocked For down sure. by different things in this life. But 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 as uh, as the rock group says, yeah. you know, 
I get up again. I get up again. Oh, yeah, I think for me, it's like the trajectory is never going to go just up, right? Yeah. But as long as it's kind of going like this, it's all good. As long as you're not letting yourself go down that way. Absolutely. So if you're going up and down a little bit, it's fine. As yeah, long as like, you know, absolutely. you're kind of pushing yourself up yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. So that's how get... I look at failure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, failure, uh, it's only failure if you don't get up. Yeah, and it makes us stronger, I think. It makes you also realize what you do have when... You know, in, when times are good. Absolutely. There's so much that is learned in what we call failure anyway. So, yeah, yeah I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not of that, uh, that uh, mindset that says, uh, oh, oh, I have failed. No. Yeah, exactly. No. I agree. Yeah. Very good. So that should be um, a key takeaway for yeah. everybody. <laughs> There's no such thing as failure. There's get up and no, go. <laughs> yes, get up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, let's return back yes. to marriage again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my favorite topic. <laughs> you, mine too. <laughs> okay, they call marriage an yeah. institution. Yeah. So it's called the institution of marriage. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. Is marriage easy? Is marriage hard? Well, there's a reason. Is it both? <laughs> it can be very hard. Uh, there's a reason why it's called an institution. Okay. Because when you think of an institution, the first thing that comes to mind for me is school. Right. A school of okay. higher learning. Right. A school. So marriage to me is also a school. Okay. It's a school where we get to learn in a very, very... Um, uh, Perhaps to me, um, the best soil possible for growth and learning. Right. You know, there is no better soil to learn more about you mm -hmm. than in a relationship. Right. You know, and marriage be just because of the nature of what it entails. You know, uh, for better, for worse, till death do us mm -hmm. part. You know that uh, the, the, the vows that are taken in the marriage that this is forever. Yeah. Nobody steps into marriage saying that. Oh, uh, I'm just gonna try it out for yeah. two months. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're a bit crazy, yeah. yeah. But but yeah. most people when they step into this yeah. institution of higher learning. <laughs> Maybe that's what we should be called. <laughs> we should yeah. rebrand it. I'm telling you, I call it an institution of higher learning. Yeah. And what are we supposed to learn? Yeah. The first thing that we're supposed to learn is about ourselves because you will discover that you're not all that. <laughs> yeah. Because all of us, all of us have areas of of, of weaknesses, yeah. strengths. Uh, we discover the things that we need to work on. Yeah. Even what we call strength, we discover that, boy, we could do better. Mm. You know, we can do better in this, you know. And so I think marriage presents the opportunity mm -hmm. to learn about ourselves. And of course, as you learn about yourself, you also have the opportunity in that to learn about somebody else yeah. so that it's not all about you. And uh, we are not an island. Yeah. Uh, people do bring things to the table, good and bad. Sure. You know, it's a mixture. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, if you want to call it a melting pot. Smorgasbord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. it's a buffet of yeah. different things, you know, that are brought to the table. Yeah. And I think that marriage presents the opportunity. So there's never to me a failed marriage. There's nothing like that. Okay. If somebody says, "Oh, my marriage was a failure," I said, "Think again." Yeah. Think again. That's I what think I said. Good, uh, yeah. Think yeah, again. Think about again that. about that. Think again. Yeah. You're supposed to learn about yourself and about others. So if you say that it was a failure, perhaps you failed to learn. No. Think again. Would is what I would say to such a person. Think again. That is a very strong message. Yeah. Think again. It's an institution of higher learning. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and are people good at learning about themselves? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, as in every school, you have good students. <laughs> and you have students that come with a certain kind of attitude. Right. Uh, we all need to be better students. Uh, to learn, again, as I say, mostly about ourselves yeah. and then about others. And marriage gives us the opportunity to do both. 
it's wonderful. It's a wonderful institution. <laughs> Maybe I'll try it one day. <laughs> I'll come to you for advice. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh <my> God. <laughs> All right, that was amazing. <laughs> would there be like a key takeaway or a message for our viewers and listeners that you would like to give us? Yeah. Towards yeah. the end of this chat. Yeah. Well, you know, um, the key takeaway, because again, uh, when I look at life, uh, I realized that, yeah, most people can embrace what they call the good things in life. Yeah, uh, we can embrace winning a million, winning a million dollars. Oh wow, that's great! We can embrace uh, job promotions. Oh wow, that's awesome! Uh, we can embrace. Uh, oh, we just had a baby. Yeah, all these things we say are good, mm -hmm. and we can embrace. However, we have difficulty in embracing the things in our life that we call a crisis, a tragic problem, mm -hmm. all these definitions we give them. We have issues embracing those. What I say is this, the, the, the takeaway is embrace all of life because behind every crisis, there is an opportunity. Behind every crisis, there is an opportunity. You just got to look deeper. It's there. You just got to look deeper. And so Amazing. that would be my take. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure hosting you, Dr. G. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank Love you so all the much, words Dr. of wisdom. Oh, well, I don't know. Well, we'll <laughs> all right. it's been uh, what I have learned through the course yeah. of my life so far. That's it. So far. That's it. So far. There's more. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for sharing your life Thank so far. You. We might see you again. <laughs> uh, you bet. You bet. You for the, you for bet. the rest of it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs>